and I'm Scotty. This video is going to be about dumb phones and uh, Cletus, he really likes dumb phones so he insisted on doing the introduction for all future dumb phone videos. So uh, in particular Cletus likes dumb phones that run KaiOS. Now you may remember that about a year ago, I think it was September 25th of last year, I made a video called uh, choosing, choosing a dumb phone ain't easy. And in that video, I talked about how there are all kinds of dumb phones available. There are two G ones, three G ones, and it's very difficult sometimes to actually find the model that you want. For example, you want, you know, like a, a Nokia 3310, but it doesn't work with your particular provider, or maybe you have to buy this phone, but you have to buy it directly from your provider because it's a slightly different variant or, you know, that kind of stuff. And of course, 5G is coming out, and so they're starting to get rid of 2G and 3G in many places. So in that video, I also talked about the difficulty of finding a 4G-enabled dumb phone. And so I talked a little bit about KaiOS. Now, uh, just to recap briefly, KaiOS is um, it's a, it's a, an operating system made by a company in California. And it is uh, based on Linux. It's a very small, basically a uh, very small Linux distribution that has the Gecko web rendering engine on top of it. And uh, basically it's just a, it's not Android, it's not iOS, it's a Linux based um, operating system that's designed to run on uh, phones that are winky, basically. Slower processors, small amount of RAM, and the reason that KaiOS has become popular, uh, I believe it's since um, the first quarter of 2018, something like 20 to 25 million dumb phones with KaiOS are being sold each quarter because in countries like India, where many people didn't have internet access, now they're able to get these very inexpensive little dumb phones um, like these guys, and they some of them run KaiOS, and they want the 4G-enabled phones because they don't have internet access. So now with one of these dumb phones that's 4G-enabled, they have internet access. So you have literally hundreds and hundreds of millions of people who now are getting these dumb phones that run KaiOS and um, they have internet access, they have uh, you know some apps they can run and so of course Google wanted to get their mitts on this large new customer base. So in my video a year ago I said, oh but this is very bad because what happened in I believe it was June of 2018 is Google invested like 22 million dollars in KaiOS and so I said, well that's bad because as we all know, you know, Google, you know, people are suing Google and all this, all this, you know, privacy and data leaks on Google and Facebook and all this stuff. So, um, back then I said, well, the problem is we can't get, you know, a 4G phone that doesn't have Google involved. And, um, a little while ago, a viewer emailed me and said, you know, hey, you know, I've been reading a little bit about this KaiOS, you know, talk to some people and it looks like it might not be as bad as we thought. So what I actually did is I decided, you know, maybe I should actually get a dumb phone, get a 4G dumb phone that actually has KaiOS running on it and actually test it out. You think? So that's exactly what I did. I bought this guy, which is the Nokia 8110. The numbers confuse me. This is a, this is a 3G, it's the Nokia 3310, and this is a 4G dumb phone, Nokia 8110. I'm going to screw up those numbers, so just, that's what they are, 3310, 8110. So in the rest of the video, when I screw up the numbers, bear with me. Um, this guy is 3G, he does not run KaiOS. This 8110 is a slider, it's also known as the banana phone, and uh, it does run KaiOS. So what I'm going to do is kind of walk you through some of the details of KaiOS and show you some of the surprising features, which basically mean that in the end, I actually really like it. And this is now my primary dumb phone, even though it's running KaiOS and even though there's Google stuff on it. Um, also, at the very end of the video, for those of you who have uh, big sausage fingers uh, and find these little, little tactile pointer pads difficult to use, as I do. Um, Nokia also recently announced some very good news. They're going to release a 4G KaiOS phone with big honking buttons on it. So I'll talk about that at the end of the video because I'm very excited about that. But first, what's the deal with KaiOS? Okay, so here 
8110. Um, this guy, as you can see, is a slider. Um, it's pretty much the same. Um, this one is, it has two slim SIM slots, uh, slots for two SIM cards. You can put in a micro SD card. I think I put like a 32 gig micro SD card in. Um, the phone, you know, it turns on and off when you, you know, it wakes up and goes to sleep, answers calls and hangs up when you do the slider thing. And of course it looks like the phone's in the matrix, except I got the bright yellow one because who wants black when you can have bright, crazy banana yellow. So what we're going to do is just kind of turn it on here. Uh, the battery life is pretty darn good. Um, it's pretty much the same or slightly longer as this guy, and this guy has very good battery life. If you're used to smartphones, your average smartphone, this guy probably has the same or slightly better battery life. So as you can see, when we power it on here, um, it's, uh, yeah. The one thing I don't like about uh, this particular phone is that KaiOS takes a little bit longer to boot up. The This little dude over here, he fires up like really, really quick, right? And because this guy is sort of like a... Oh! So because this guy is uh, got a bit more power and is not just a simple dumb phone, um, he is... Uh, yeah, he takes a little while to start up, which is kind of annoying but um, it's not totally crazy. You've got all kinds of things. You've got like a call log. You know, you now pressing this little button, this little tactile thing here is like super difficult. I have to use my fingernail because it's like super tiny and that's, that's pretty annoying, but you get used to it after a while. You've got call, la call log contacts, the store, which I'll get to in a second, uh, messages like SMS camera, a snake game. Uh, it has YouTube on it pre-installed. It has Google Assistant pre-installed has a music player, annoying button, uh, photo gallery, uh, FM radio, web browser, which is very small and pretty useless, but uh, if you're used to a smartphone anyway, but it's it's semi-workable. You can do email, it's, it's fairly basic, and actually, um, I haven't actually put an email address in here, so I haven't tested that, but it's uh, it's got a whole lot of options in it. You can change port numbers and server types and just like you can on a smartphone. Um, then you have a clock, you have a video player, you also have Google, Google Search. Uh, it also comes uh, with Google Maps installed. It comes with Twitter pre-installed. Then you have a calendar settings, a note-taking thing, calculator, and of course it has some various games and stuff. Uh, but let's go into the settings because this is where it gets kind of interesting. So you see here uh, in the network and connectivity tab, you, you can turn airplane mode on and off. You have this mobile network and data menu uh, where you can turn your data connection on and off, um, data roaming, you know, kind of standard stuff. Uh, you can also turn Wi-Fi on and off. It has Wi-Fi, it has Bluetooth, so if you want to do Bluetooth hands-free, you can. Uh, it has geolocation, you can turn that on and off if you don't want to use it. SIM manager, some calling options, LTE options. It also has internet sharing, so you can actually set up like your phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot and share the data connection from your mobile plan to say like a laptop or a tablet or something, which is pretty fancy for a dumb phone. Then in the pers personalization tab, you just have like sound. You can you can have customized MP3 ringtones, uh, display options, search options, blah blah blah, notices, date and time. Uh, language uh, in input methods you probably want to go in here and change this to use predictive off because if you don't it's extremely painful to type anything on it so anyway that that stuff's not the personalization tab is not very exciting when we get into privacy and security that's pretty exciting you have your normal screen lock stuff and then you have this app permissions thing so you go into app permissions and uh, you see assistant camera and maps so you can say like well okay, what are the permissions for Google Assistant, uh, geolocation, deny. So it allows you by default to, even though these Google apps are installed, you can just go in here and say, no, don't let them access stuff. It also has these do not track settings for, you know, don't allow, uh, tell webs websites and apps that I don't want to be tracked, uh, blah, 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 kind of standard stuff, but the option is there. Browsing privacy, you can clear your whole browsing history and that sort of thing. So this is in the device information tab, and it does actually have, as you can see here, a software update. So it has over-the-air software update, and when I first got the phone, 
uh, it automatically connected and checks for an update and if there is one uh, you just say download and it updates itself so you don't have to sign in with any kind of account you don't have to do any nonsense if you have a data connection you can update kios itself and as i said since i got the phone it's updated itself once with bug fixes and such so that's pretty that's pretty handy and finally there's this uh account kios account page and you can go here and it will say uh I'm trying to keep that light off the screen Keep your information safe with the KaiOS account. If you ever lose your phone, we'll allow you to remotely lock or wipe, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that I did not sign up for. Okay, so about the KaiOS account, I should note that uh, it's it's actually pretty interesting because I was surprised to learn that when, when you first get the phone, you, you turn it on, and just like with a smartphone, you expect it to say, like, hey, give me your Google account, right? Sign up for a KaiOS account. Well, what it actually does is... Uh, it says, hey, do you want to sign up for a KaiOS account and send, like, you know, um, information, help us improve, blah, 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 and I just said no. And um, then I went, oh, look, it has these Google apps pre-installed, Google Maps, YouTube, uh, Google Assistant, Google Search, and so I fired the apps up, and they actually work. Like, you can actually fire up Google Maps, and it works, and you don't need to sign in with your Google account. Uh, it has an email app. If you don't actually enter an email address in which I didn't, then it doesn't have your Google account. It doesn't have you associated with an email address and a KaiOS account or anything like that. And if you don't enter an email address in, it doesn't have any of your email addresses either. So if they are hoovering up any data, it's not very thorough as compared to a smartphone running Android. So even though Google may be there, it's actually pretty cool. And, and beyond that, as I just showed, you can actually go in and say, like, no, don't do geolocation. You know, there's some, some permissions you can customize, like, for each of the Google apps. So pretty much out of the box, they don't force you into anything. They don't make you sign into anything, uh, as is often the case with Android. Um, and also, even to download apps on the KaiOS App Store, you don't even need to sign in with an account. Okay, so I wanted to show you the KaiOS Store, but unfortunately I can't do that because my connection here is too spotty. So uh, let me just describe it. You can go onto the KaiOS store. You don't need to uh, actually sign in with any kind of account, and you can just pick an app and install it. And it's pretty interesting because uh, you can install Facebook, you can install WhatsApp. Um, as time has gone on, uh, there have been more and more apps from sort of uh, mainstream Internet sites and that sort of thing that are actually creating apps on the KaiOS store. Now, the KaiOS store is not the... Android, like the Google Play Store. It's, it's completely different. Um, also, the, the selection of apps in the KaiOS Store is, like, tiny compared to the number that are in Google's Android Store. So basically what happened is, you know, Google gave KaiOS some money, invested in it. KaiOS said, let's put these uh, Google apps here because Google invested in us, and there you go. Uh, but you don't have to sign in with a Google account. You cannot download apps from the Play Store, as you do on an Android phone, uh, you can only use apps from the KaiOS Store, which is a separate thing from Google's Play Store. So you can't just install any Android app you want because this is not Android, this is KaiOS. Uh, so it appears that the, the sort of investment in the agreement was more like Google wanted their search, their assistant, uh, and their maps as sort of uh, apps that are installed by default on KaiOS for all these, these new users. Uh, the, the Google Maps application, which I wanted to show, but I can't because of the poor connectivity, um, the Google Maps application actually works very well, uh, even though it's a tiny 2.4-inch screen, and you've got to use that annoying little thumb button pointer thingy. Um, it works well. You don't have to log in. Um, you can turn geolocation on and off. So if, you know, if I wanted to track me while I'm using you know, Google Maps, I can do that, and when I'm done, I just go and turn it off, and there you go. Um, so overall, I'm actually quite happy with it. Uh, I had it about a month now, and I have to say that I actually really, really like KaiOS. It's actually quite good. The only thing I don't like, as I said, is this little crazy numbery pointer pad thing here. It's not a number pad. This little circle thing with up, down, left, right, and the button, it's so thin, and it's not actually... Uh, it's not raised enough. Like, it's nearly impossible to press. And, like, I don't have sausage, sausage fingers. I have relatively you know, good-sized hands, but I have, like, you know, keyboard commando fingers. They're relatively thin, and I have a heck of a time playing with this thing and getting it to move up, down, and 
Um, so the good news is that um, back on September 5th, just a few weeks ago, Nokia announced that they are going to release uh, at least two new phones. And one of them is the Nokia, T Nokia 800 Tough, I think it's called. Um, that is basically like the Caterpillar phone that I, that I reviewed earlier. And this Tough version is, again, 4G and it runs KaiOS, but it's in this sort of <clears throat> compact, uh, you know, candy bar format. And it's supposed to be like IP68 waterproof and dustproof. Uh, you can drop it from a height of 1.8 meters and it won't break. And it's a very durable phone. And it will be running the latest version of KaiOS as this phone is. Um, so if you need a tough phone and you want 4G, um, I would say wait a few weeks until the this new Nokia Tough phone comes out and grab that one because you will actually be quite happy with KaiOS, I think, if you, even if you're trying to avoid Google. The other one that I'm actually more excited about is the Nokia, I hope I get the number right, the Nokia 2720 Flip. Now, back in the day, there was another Nokia 2720, which if you search for that on Amazon, for example, right now, don't search for Nokia 2720 because that will bring up an older looking flip phone. And the new Nokia 2720 is the 2720 Flip. Uh, it's going to be a flip phone, as you can see, and it has big honking buttons. Uh, it will actually have battery life that's slightly higher, about 10% higher than this one. And other than that, it's, I, as far as I can tell, it's the same screen, the same functionality. Um, pretty much everything's the same, except it's in the flip form factor. As I said, that one should be out within a few weeks, hopefully. And when it does come out, I'm going to get one and probably review it too. Uh, because, yeah, I'm very excited about that one. I know many of you have written in and said, do you know of any 4G flip phones? Uh, and now I do. Anyway, so that is the story with KaiOS. Um, basically, it's actually not as bad as I thought. In the end, sometimes I'm actually an idiot. So <laughs> I've actually gotten the phone and actually played around with it for the past month. And yes, um, I will have to change my tune and say that if you are looking for a 4G enabled dumb phone, do not avoid KaiOS like the plague because at this point, uh, Google's investment in KaiOS happened like over a year ago and there have been at least one update, possibly two since then. And as I say, this guy, it's, it's got all the options. It's got privacy options. It's Google is not fully integrated with it. It's, it's there if you need it, but you don't really have to use this stuff. Um, so, I'm actually quite happy with it. And if you do need a 4G smartphone, do not avoid it just because of KaiOS. Right. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.